What is the one action that you can take that will transform South Africa materially in the next few days, weeks, or months? Anyone want to try? What is the one action that you can take that will transform South Africa materially in the next few days, weeks, or months? Anyone want to try? What is the one action? No one, wanted, no one willing to try? Guys, for me, the word is empower. I'm going to give you a situation. I was meeting with a client of mine. I greeted him in Kwasanati and the coaching meeting took place. And he was so excited to tell me something that we couldn't... The introduction was so fast. He rushed up to me and he said, Paul, oh, take a seat. He turned the screen to me. He pointed to a very small letter and a couple of months and the first numbers that he pointed to were red. The other numbers that he pointed to were green. And he said, that's a 700% increase. And I said, yes, tell me a little bit more. And he went on. He's got a team of 3,000 people, four managers, and he was able to push up his profitability by 700%. And he pointed to me. He said, it's you. I said, no, it wasn't you. It's not me. It's you. What had happened is I had empowered Nkosinati to use the skills that were inside him. He had the power. All I did was empower him. How many of you were sitting with power inside of you that you don't believe you can use? So in the five months that I worked with Across IT, we were able to have a look at aspects of his business where he was able to transform. But he had the power to do it. The power was given by the organization that he was working for. All I did was to help him. So he was able to, over a period of five months, transform his business. So we think about that. How often do we as managers, as business leaders, as pastors in our churches want to make the job happen. How many of us want to drive that change? Now, of course, Sonati is an ideal client. Now, raise your hand if you have that ideal client that works with you, that listens to you, that, that con congregant, that does everything that you ask them to do. Have you met that person? Don't they exist? There's some of them that are ideal clients. He was an ideal client. He was able to inspire his team as I was able to inspire him. Now I want to plant an idea. Is God not our coach? Is God your coach? So what is God doing? Is he telling us exactly what to do? Has God not given us the power already? But we are refusing to use it. Sometimes we're not refusing, we just don't use it. Why? Because we feel disempowered. Anyone feeling disempowered this morning? If you look at the South African context, we feel disempowered. So if you look at the word empower, M is French to give. And power is direction, speed, and in the South African context, if you're lucky, electricity. We've been fortunate to have five months, so that means that the power is working. But when we empower someone, we give them the power. We unlock the power, they've got the power. We give them almost permission to use that power. Would you agree? We have the power, but we don't give ourselves the permission to use that power. So Paul in his letter to the Ephesians in chapter 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The powers of the dark are what I call 
the seed of doubt. Do you have that seed of doubt? That one thing that says, ah, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I'm not giving away power to someone else when I'm empowering them. They've got the power. I've got the power. We have the power. God gives us the power. But we don't allow ourselves to use that power. Let's take two examples. Let's take a teacher. How many teachers in the room? Are there any teachers? We're in the school. One. Great. Number of teachers I talk to want to change the education system. Do you want to change the education system? There are a lot of changes that you want to bring in, new things. Guys, we're sitting with a change, an education system that needs a big overhaul. Can he change the education system on his own? If he empowers his learners, if he talks to other teachers, if he gets them empowered, they've got the power already, if he inspires them to work together, do you think they can influence the headmaster? Can they influence the headmaster? What can those headmasters do together? Can they influence the person who's looking after that region or that area of schools? What happens if those people are empowered? Do they impact policy? Do they talk to the Minister of Education? Can they have a direct connection to change the education system? Through one action. The one teacher in the room speaks to another teacher. He empowers that teacher. That teacher empowers someone else. He still got his power. The Minister still has her power. We are impacting each other. Another example I want to use is when we look at a ward councillor. Any ward councillors in the room? People working with your constituents? The same thing. If the constituents empower the people in the room to use the power that they have to change things, what's going to happen? Those people will be able to use the power that God has given them to make a change. But to use your power, you have to do something that God has given us a little bit differently. You all believe that God has given us a free will? God's not created us as robots? The Latin word for me or I or self is ego. Anyone know what that ego does? Quite a dangerous thing because ego wants to make me more important than you. But I want to take that and I want to turn the ego around. I want to change the word ego to mean embrace, gratitude, and have an open mind. If you embrace the thought that you have, what you're trying to do, you can look at it differently. If you have gratitude, it doesn't matter whether you don't even have a roof over your head, but you have gratitude, you have show gratitude that you are living, that you have some health. You can influence and empower other people. And if you have an open mind to say that we're not going to do the thing the way that we always did it, we can change. I have to say it's less about me than more about God. So when we do that, we can start to make a difference. I want to give you an example. Imagine a pool of water, still water. You walk up to the pool, you pick up a stone, you take the stone and you throw it into the middle of that pool. What happens? Ripples start to move out. What do I have control over? The stone. I can choose what stone to pick up. Will I have big ripples if I pick up a little stone? Will I have big ripples if I pick up a big stone? So what is the pebble or the stone that you're picking up? Because when you start doing that, and you throw it into a pond, into a pool, then we start changing things. 
in my quiet time, God reminds me quite often of the following verse, 2 Chronicles 7. He says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Does our land require healing? What can you do? Can you empower others? So when we look at the ego, we've got to say it's less about us. And now we take that stone and we throw it. The waves that are radiating out, they're radiating out. Where, when does that energy run out when the waves are going out? How often, how long does it take to run out? Depends on the size of the stone. So when you've got a big stone, they will take longer to run out. Do I have control over the waves? Once I've empowered one person, that stone that goes in, it's happened. The seed is planted. But if you doubt yourself to pick up that pebble, if you doubt yourself to pick up that stone, you're not using the power that you have in your hand to throw it into the pond. And how many of us, if we had that thrown, that stone thrown into the pond, would make a difference in society? And this is, a, as a coach, I always ask people, how many of you have goals? How many have set goals? No. Goals are the way of almost projecting where we want to go to, but we've got to take actions. We've got to decide what we want to do. Is this going to be difficult? For sure. However, James, we hear, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life. The Lord has promised to them. We love it. Life is tough for everyone. We've heard this morning people involved in accidents, people involved in fraud, and not because they wanted to, because someone else chose for them. I'm reminded of a big decision that I had to take about 20 years ago, which affected my work situation and my family. For days I went on my knees and I prayed, God, what is the answer? Each day I would say, should I take option A? Or should I take option B? Silence. You've been in that situation. God is quiet. He's not answering you. I go back again. God, clarify what decision I need to take. Frantically, as the time drew near, I reworded my question. I almost shouted to God, Should I take option A and go left? Or should I take option B and go right? And God responded, simple answer. Yes. Mm. Mm. See, God, you don't understand my question. I said, do I go left or do I go right? God said, yes. <laughs> I realized that God gave me the power to make the decision. He does not make the decision for us. He takes us on a journey where we're going to make the decision. Amen. God wants us to choose the root. We take the root. God is on that root with us. So what root are you on? What journey are you taking? Because if you think about it, empowerment is one of those things that we almost misunderstand. And if you know what empowerment is, you can start to accelerate so I want you to think about your own situation. When we empower people, we allow people to take ownership. We're not controlling people. How many of you are in a situation where you want to control people? Go left, go right, do this, do that. How's that working for you? How many of you go home exhausted every night? You're tired of moving people. You're tired of telling people what to do. But if you empower them, you give them the option to use what they have to move in the right direction, then we make a difference. So when
when people are empowered, there's an emotional response to what they do. Whether it's performing, competing. Empowerment is not a specific action or replication of what needs to be done. Those we empower understand why they're doing it and choose why they're doing it. If you can understand why you are doing something, why you are on this earth, why God has put you in a situation, then you might ask God, why me, why this time? And he would say, yes. You've got to read, you've got to get the verses, you've got to try and understand. Too many people believe that they do not have control over their own situation, their work situation, their communities, and even the future. They wait like program, programmed robots for someone to give them the next move. Are you that person? Have you disempowered yourself? How often do we do that? As leaders, we have to say, no, you can control yourself. You have the power to make a decision. And you must. We have to make a decision. We have to decide what we're going to do. Your performance can be improved when you have the perception of control. But if I try to control others, I can't. I can't get the waves to go the way that I want to go. All I have to do is take that stone and drop it in the pool. As leaders, our role is to help those we have influence over, to believe in themselves. God believes in us. He created us. God has given us the power. He's he empowered us. We disempower ourselves. We look at the world, we look at what people say around us, we allow them to control us. We are not arrogant about empowerment. We are, after all, servant leaders. Remember Chronicles 7, verse 12, uh, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal their life. Anything that you're doing, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a business owner, if you empower your staff and imagine you've got 10 people working for you, working in your business, you empower them, you give them enough skills so they can work on their own speed, in their own way of doing things. If each person can be 1% more effective. 1% per year. In a straight line, you could probably increase by 10%. 1%. So if you're a greeter at the church, greet someone more friendly. If you are busy inviting someone to your church, invite them faster. If you are driving in an environment and you're causing an accident, what can I do differently to make sure my car is maintained so I don't cause that accident? Think about that. What are the small things we can do that will bring change? And don't underestimate the small things, because the small things are the things that lead to big change. I'm, some, I'm often sad, and if I look at the number of taxpayers in this country, and I say, why is that so, so few people are paying tax, and so many people getting a grant? Imagine if we empower people through what we say, we give them permission to do what they are skilled at doing. How many jobs can be created? How much more tax can be collected? How much more productive can organizations be? So we need to humbly approach leadership, the way we work with people and ourselves. And then God can work through us and accelerate the change that is needed. If one coach working with the Corsonati 
can empower a single man to leverage and accelerate a 700% growth in one division with 3,000 people. Imagine what you could do with your area of influence. I believe every single person is a leader on this earth. Our school assistant, I see the teacher, no, the teacher hasn't left the room, sorry, I was getting nervous. How many people feel in their teaching environment that they don't have the power, they can't do what they need to do to change? Imagine what you can do in your areas, no matter how small that is. If each manager, pastor, team leader embraces empowerment and lives the principles each day, lives those principles, what are the consequences? What will happen? How many ripples will radiate from your stone? All you need to do is to choose how big a stone you throw. Imagine what happens when more counselors do this with their constituents, church leaders do it with their congregations, and most importantly, parents do it with their children. What will change in this beautiful country of ours? The possibilities are endless. However, when there's no guidance, the people fail and fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Proverbs. And even if you just read Proverbs every single day, you are getting wisdom that guides you. So for a few seconds, consider what will happen when you empower others. What is the impact on progress in this country? When we do this, we empower others for acceleration. Thank you very much.